Hey there, I'm Jim Edgar, and I wanted to talk today about cursor behavior in Twisted Wave. It's one of those things that we use all the time. It's in every recording that we use. But there are a couple different ways to set it up, and that gives us a few more options in terms of maximizing our workflow and being a little bit more efficient depending on what task we're trying to do. Uh, so let's jump over to Twisted Wave. So in this case, this is just the basic Twisted Wave audio file that I've recorded. Uh, the cursor is the yellow vertical line that you see sort of at about two seconds. I'm clicking in different places. The cursor follows exactly where I click in terms of placing the mouse, clicking one time. That actually means that I can play from if here. I press the it also would let me record wherever the cursor is. So in this case, I've got the cursor about in the middle of the file. If I go ahead and hit the record button, or if I just press Command R on the keyboard, it's going to start recording. You'll notice that it's pushing the existing audio forward. It's not overwriting it. Uh, that's sort of a nice feature about Twisted Wave is it is leaving the previous audio intact unless you want to physically overwrite it. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the space bar, which is gonna stop the recording. And when I do that and zoom out, I can go ahead and jump back to the beginning of what I just recorded and press play it's going to start recording. and it's going to play back. Now, the, the standard behavior, and this is usually the way it comes set up when you first get uh, it, sort of nice is when I press the space bar or stop, it jumps back to where I started from. In that case, if we go up under the Twisted Wave Preferences editing pane, we'll see that there is an option to move the cursor back after playing. I find this to probably be the most effective way for most of what I do in Twisted Wave in terms of auditioning quickly, in terms of listening to a phrase, seeing if there's a little lip smack that maybe I missed. I kind of always want to go back to the beginning and play through. I like it there. However, it was different than the application that I used before Twisted Wave, where the behavior was the opposite. If I uncheck that and go ahead and acknowledge it, uh, and I go ahead and press the space bar to play. To start recording. You'll notice In this case, when I press the space bar again, forward. what's so going to happen is that the cursor just stops. It does not jump back to where I played from. Now, for the most part, as I said before, when I'm doing auditions, when I'm doing kind of some quick review and I can see the whole file, jumping back to where I started is probably the pre preferred behavior. In another case, if we have a long type of file like this, what we may find is that we start playing at the beginning of the file. In this case, I've got, you know, 20, 15, 20 minutes of audio. If I'm QCing this whole file, it may not be appropriate for the cursor to jump back to where I started, because hopefully I haven't made a lot of mistakes. And when I press the stop key, uh, when I press the space bar, if that cursor jumps back to the beginning, I'm going to have a little bit of, a, of an extra step or two to figure out where the cursor was when I pressed the space bar. So there are two ways around it. The first is as I'm playing through something uh, and I hear an error, I can always just press the M key, which drops a marker, and then I can go back and find that. That's definitely one approach. But the approach that I'm talking about with just the cursor would be to use that unchecked method of cursor behavior. So when I stop, the cursor stops exactly where I press the space bar. Now, a couple of revisions ago, Thomas added the cursor behavior up to the audio menu. So you can actually implement or take off this behavior of move cursor back after playing. It does the same thing here that it will do is if I go up under preferences, editing, and have this checked or unchecked. If I uncheck this here, it will uncheck it up in the audio menu. They both do the same thing. It's kind of a nice way to have that functionality a little bit closer at hand. You can also, as I always like to do, make that into a keyboard equivalent if it's something that you use all the time. Now, one of the other basic functions that I often use in addition to the cursor behavior is this move to selection start, move to selection end. You'll notice that I've set up a couple of keyboard equivalents. I have a longer article about that on my site about how to do that. And in this case, I've got option S set to move the cursor to selection start and option E 
to move it to the selection end. Now, if nothing's selected and I press option S, it just jumps to the beginning of the file. Conversely, option E jumps to the end of the file. So that's a quick way to kind of jump around in the file, particularly for longer things like audiobooks. Also, if I'm working on just a section, and you will notice that when I highlighted that the cursor jumped to the end, I can just go option S and bring that cursor back to the beginning. Also, I can go, if I've proofed a section and I want to go on to the next one, I could easily go Option E and then Command D, which deselects. And my cursor is now at the end of the section that I just finished proofing. So I can kind of use those three things to jump around in addition to the options about whether or not I would like my cursor to move back after playing. So I hope that unpacked a very simple aspect of Twisted Wave that uh, can be useful depending on what you're using. And... Uh, in the meantime, thanks for your attention and look forward to sharing some more tips with you in the future. Thanks a lot.